All right, welcome back once again. So this is a lecture, another lecture wrap-up video for lecture number 17. Specifically today, we're covering the topics of mutual inductance as well as transformers, which kind of go together. Uh, they're from different chapters in the specific textbook that we use, uh, we're using in this class, uh, Engineering 17 here, spring quarter 2014. I wanted to bring both these things together since they're very uh, much uh, linked together in their application. So first of all, starting with mutual inductance right here. So again, we start out with this basic circuit and you know we already have previously talked about inductors and resistors in a given series, in a given circuit, but now um, due to this fact that an inductor has the ability to kind of build up um, some stored energy in the in its magnetic field, <clears throat> if we actually bring this then close in close proximity to another inductor, uh, we can actually start to couple those two, the two fields that each of those given inductors are experiencing, and we'll get some of this mutual inductance effect that goes on. So in terms of the impact as we're looking at analyzing circuits is that we have to account for the fact that due to this mutual inductance, we're, we're inducing a, a sort of secondary voltage on top of uh, the voltage drop that's already occurring just due to the so-called self-inductance, which is the, this L term that we've been using uh, previously, right? So in, in thinking about doing some mesh current equations, which I've written out here, we first want to, uh, we have to orient ourselves in regards to the polarity of the mutual in, uh, inductance term, and that's why we have these uh, so-called the dot convention on a given pair of mutual inductors which are tied together by this mutual inductance term M, okay? And again, so we've been through the convention here in, ter in terms of how we define the polarity uh, using the dots, and so if we define some given currents, so in, on this side of the loop I have a current I1, on this side uh, um, of the loop I have current I2 as defined, so if I look about what, what's the mutual induced uh, voltage uh, on this coil here due to what's happening on this side, I, I look at this current and I say, okay, well this current's coming into the dotted side of this given coil. So therefore, um, on this side of the circuit, my mutually induced uh, voltage here will be positive at that corresponding dotted uh, side of this coil. Similarly, I look on this side here and I see that my current uh, here is coming into my non-dotted side of this particular coil. Therefore, um, the positive terminal for the mutually induced voltage uh, in this case is going to be also on the non-dotted side because again, that is correlating to what's happening with the current I2 there. Okay, so again, so as we write out these mesh current equations here, uh, you know, if I were to go around this loop here, of course I have a minus VG because I'm going a voltage rise from minus to plus in this case. I got my I times R, which is my voltage drop across my resistor. And then now I have these two terms, uh, the self-inductance, the, the voltage drop to my self-inductance, uh, which again, we just typically define as a drop in, in whichever direction the current is uh, traveling. So that would be again, L times I1 uh, over D, I1, uh, DI1, DT. And then this mutually induced voltage, which is gonna be that term M times DI2 DT, because uh, again, that's this is gonna be impacted by the current that's traveling in this uh, branch of the circuit uh, here, okay? And then similar, similarly, we can write a, a given mesh current equation for this side, which again, is counting for not only the self-inductance term, but the mutually induced voltage uh, as well. Okay, so we then moved on to kind of talk a little bit more about this M term, the mutually mutual inductance term specifically, and we were able to get to a point of defining what that is with respect to the given self-inductances of two given inductors. So we found that they had this relationship that related to the square root of L1 times L2 um, and incorporated this coupling coefficient K. And so K here can be between zero and one, and that basically gives some indication as to you know how closely linked these the two magnetic fields are of these given inductors okay so of course if this was zero that means they're you know widely spread apart and there's no interaction between these two coils whereas if this is one that would be sort of perfect or ideal uh, mutual inductance between those two coils okay finally talking about here we're talking about energy and we went through the process of looking at what what's the change on the energy being absorbed by the circuit uh, due to this mutual induction 
mutual inductance. So we found that it was uh, just the sum of the two energies due to the self-inductance, so one half Li squared for each of the two coils. But then we also had to add this term uh, with the mutual inductance times I1 uh, times I2. This would either be positive or negative based on the given polarities that you have with the given dot dimensions, okay? Now moving on to transformers. Um, so transformers, again, were just a specific uh, case of you know, two mutually uh, uh, coupled inductors. And in this case, this was a, a general form of a transformer in that these are two are now closely linked. And in general, we had sort of indicated that a, a given transformer is typically uh, in a real case, indicated not only by the given inductors in the transformer, but also by some internal resistances, which we define as R1 and R2 here. So now here we are moving into the frequency domain, because again, this is coming from chapter uh, nine in your textbooks. So we were already talking about sinusoidal sources at this point. So this is a sinusoidal uh, phase or voltage that I have here, and then I have some given source impedance that goes along with the, my source voltage and then a given load impedance. And so we went initially through the process of, in order to kind of illustrate the value of having a transformer, we went through the process of defining what is this equivalent impedance between terminals A and B. So just seeing everything that's happening on this side of the circuit. And you see, as you would expect, we have R1 plus J omega L1. So that's just the um, impedances of my resistor on the left side here of the transformer, which would be the primary side as well as the self-inductance term from the primary coil here. Again, the primary coil is the one that's connected to the source. But then you see this term over here now is basically uh, a lumping together of the various mutual inductances that, 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 that is occurring, as well as the actual impedance of this side of the circuit. Now, if, if you look specifically to see this load impedance, it actually shows up now in the denominator of this particular term. So again, a general a transformer can be useful when we want to sort of, if we're fixed with a given load um, impedance that we have at our disposal, we could use a transformer to sort of, uh, you know, quote unquote, transform that load impedance to some other impedance that I might want to have, maybe to get maximum power transfer through my given circuit. So I could use a transformer to kind of shape the given impedance uh, depending on what these values of L and R were in that case, okay. Uh, so that was a word general transformer. Then we also talked about ideal transformers. So there's some specific criteria to get an ideal case, uh, such as this K coupling coefficient needed to be equal to one. So ideal coupling and also the self-inductance terms uh, would be more or less uh, infinite. And the way we illustrate that in a given circuit diagram is by placing two bars between the two coils. This indicates an ideal transformer. And then we'd worked out some kind of key relationships here that would be useful in evaluating an ideal transformer that relates the voltage, uh, again, this phasor voltage quantities across uh, a given coil on either side here. And so if we knew the number of turns, that's these, this N um, numbers indicates the number of turns of a given coil on either side of the transformer, we could relate then what the voltage would be through this relationship, and we could also relate what the current would be, I1 and I2 on either side of the transformer, again, based on the ratio of the turns that I have on, on uh, each of the given coils, okay? So this wraps up, again, talking about mutual inductance, transformers, uh, really building on what we've already worked on with just looking at inductors in general, but now tying together this new mutual inductance term uh, this again was lecture 17 and that about does it for uh, this video so as always stay classy